Hey everybody, it is Salvage Saturday and I'm kind of thinking about making this a regular or at least a semi-regular occurrence and I've got a few friends that are joining me today. There's going to be a playlist link for you below. I'd love for you to check it out. Go ahead and get into my projects. Let me know what you think of them and I'll check back with you in a little bit. All right, we're starting off with a TV table. That's right. I found this beauty in the garbage and all we're going to do is we're going to take all of the screws off of the back really easy no crazy ex special stuff required <laughs> and once you do that it's a decent looking like tabletop um you can tell it's wood so i sanded it all down i stained it i went ahead and did like a white brush you know a white wash over it a little bit sanded it down again I didn't walk you through every step of it, but that's all right. We're here to do some chalking. So I went ahead and applied some surface wax and I have found the best application, at least for me, is after I've applied the surface wax, I go in with my heat gun and kind of warm up the wax and then buff it a little bit more. I've gotten, this is just like I said, this has been the best method for me as opposed to just applying the surface wax because I end up apply, applying too much and then my chalk paste does not adhere like it should. You know what I mean? Like it looks very splotchy. So this is, like I said, the best way I have found to have a non chalk tour surface. This has just worked best for me. We're going to go ahead and use our Candy Cane Co transfer this beauty is uh, about $25 you get a lot of little details and things to put in there I taped it off I shouldn't have skip that if you want to do something like this project uh, just because I ended up having to take the tape off and then redo it anyway so don't bother with the tape right now I thought it would be easier and it was not um, what I'm doing right now is I am fuzzing the transfer what that's gonna do is it's gonna take off some of the stickiness because they come uh, brand new they're very very sticky and you want it to stick enough but you don't want it to be so hard that you have to stretch your transfer. We're gonna start off with bright white paste. And I'll tell you in a minute, it didn't work out for me because it is too thick. And I will tell you why in a minute. I recorded it while I was you know, actually doing it. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that transfer though. Uh, there's a couple other choices that I have that I thought about using but there's one that they have out there called the Kringle Cookie Company one. I really wanted to use that one too, but it's not available anymore. It's retired. That'd be adorable. There's one that's like everything's better at grandma's house or something. That'd be amazing. I'm going to link below in my uh, link tree some other choices that you may love as well. And also in my link tree, I'm going to have everything I use to make this project as far as like from the chalk tour part. I can't obviously link the tabletop because I found it in the garbage. <laughs> that was a great find too. It was like a whole set. It was like a set of four and the stand. I'm going to use it on so many projects. I cannot wait. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to link, like I said, everything down in the description box that I used. And it's really simple because there's only going to be two paste colors. You know, I didn't go like full blown crazy Christmas colors. Um, we'll probably do that in the future on some projects, but I only did two colors and it's just classic and just kind of perfect. You know what I mean? Now this one here is candy apple red. It is like your perfect Christmas red. And if you wanted to add a little bit of the black velvet paste, it would give it even a little bit deeper of a look. Just kind of depends. You can mix them all and make your like own custom colors. All depends on what you want to do. So here's the peel and you'll see it, something didn't quite turn out right. So as you may have noticed when I peeled it back, a lot of this did not come out the way it should have. And I will tell you why. So my white paste is my oldest of paste. And one day I thought I was being slick and I kind of scrubbed all of the stuff on the outside, the dry bits, into the regular bits and stirred it up, add a little bit of water, thinking like, oh, I'm so slick. I'm going to go ahead and use up everything that I can. Well, what that does is it dries it up. It dries it, not dries it up, but it dries it more than it normally is. What you need to do, should you do that, because you can, you can bring completely dried up paste back to life by adding some water. 
what you're gonna wanna do is add distilled water so that you don't end up growing, you know, life forms basically in this stuff. What I should have done before I did my chalking, I should have added a little bit more water, given it some stir, you know, some stirs with a stir stick or whatever, and got it a little more creamy in consistency. I did not do that. So that is why I have all of this. Now, mind you, had it only come out like this, how it's patchy in some spots, but comes out okay in others, very distressed, I would have left it. But since it had so much over here that looked all shadowy, I'm going to redo it. I'm going to show you how to do that though. So it's all right. I've already added in some distilled water, given it a couple of stirs to give it back a little bit more of that consistency. And what you'll have seen if you'd noticed it on my video, it wasn't going through enough. Like you would look at it and you couldn't see the screen through the transfer. That is when you know it's either too thick or it's not working right or something. You should be able to scrape it off with your squeegee and see the screen, see the transfer, like what it's coming through. And you couldn't, like you'll see it in the video. You couldn't see that. So that's why you know it wasn't right. We're gonna redo it though. It's actually a lot easier to line up than you would think. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what we're doing is I've got the transfer, it's been cleaned, it is dry, and we're just gonna realign it. See, it is way more easy than you would think it would be. Now, see, I'm just gonna try to like line it up as best I can, and if it's not 100% perfect, it's not the end of the world. Um, but it is, it's, it's just perfect the way it's supposed to be. Now you'll smooth it back down just like you normally would. Oh, see, I thought it was perfect and I decided it wasn't. Um, you want to kind of look at the entire transfer, not just the part that necessarily you're going to chalk on. Like I am not going to chalk on the entire thing. I'm going to just chalk in the spots that I feel like it needs more of that paste. I'm gonna just give us a nice little stir. I think I spritzed in a little bit more water just because I felt, you can feel it, you know what I mean? Like you can feel the difference when you get your stuff in and it's brand new, you will feel how very creamy it is. If you do something like I did and mix in the dried stuff around the edges, you'll need to probably water it down more than you would otherwise. But I'm just gonna cover the spots that I feel like it needs that paste on. We're gonna do another peel this is real time just so you know how slow you need to go and there we go I don't need to distress it it turned out just perfect now we're going to go ahead and add on some handles what I'll do is I'll take my large uh, ruler and I kind of lined it up as best I could found it you know try to get the same amount of stuff on each side stuff same number of inches or whatnot on each end I added a couple of little dots where my um I can't talk today where my screws are going to go and then what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and give myself a little spot to put my screws I'm just going to drill in some what do they call them phantom holes I don't know uh some little markers essentially so I wanted it to do that be rather than just screw directly in because I don't want my handle to move around on me and I want to be able to have a nice little spot that I want that you know screw to fit now these handles did come from Hobby Lobby. I have some that I'd gotten off of like an old dresser long ago, but it didn't work right for me. And then I just found a couple of screws that I have sitting, you know, off on my, you know, in my stash of random stuff. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing to each side, but what I will do since I did not have black screws, I'm just gonna add a little bit of ink, uh, chalk paint from Waverly on those screws so they blend in nice and then we'll do the other side and we'll be done. And it turned out really cute. I really, really love this one. Hey, I hope you are loving Salvage Saturday. Let me know if that project was as amazing as I kind of feel it was. Obviously I'm a little biased because I made it, um, <laughs> but I hope you loved it as much as I do. And don't forget to check out the playlist. I've got a few friends that we all teamed up together and decided to do salvage Saturday projects. It just sounded good together, right? It just sounded good. So I'm going to leave that playlist linked for you below in the description box, along with my chalk tour link, along with my link for my website. I sell stuff now. If you didn't know that, I have a link down below for TeresaBDIY.com. It's so cool to be a .com, right? Um, so if there's any projects down there that you're interested in buying, just hop on over there. And we're going to get back into our projects today. 
All right, so now this is actually a piece that I got up in Savannah. It's up for me because I'm in Florida. And it was at a an antique furniture store. I went in and looked around for like the broken stuff, essentially. Uh, the guy that owns the shop showed me where he kept all of his broken bits and pieces of things. And I sanded this down and look at how gorgeous this is. And it has holes on the front part. And I was like, you know what I'm going to make? I'm going to make something to hold hot cocoa mugs because my kids love hot cocoa. So we're going to make a sign. And I just got this design off of the Cricut Design Space. It came with some little lines that go around the perimeter of it. But because this board is already like rounded at the top, I, I cut them out. I was going to put them on. I'm like, you know what? It's just not working for me. So we're just, just going to go with the words. And that's all right. And we're going to take forever to peel off the tra <laughs> carrier paper. So this is cut off of my Cricut that I have. And I at first actually tried to apply the whole thing in one go, like one sheet ready to go. That did not work out for me at all. <laughs> Don't mind my head of curly hair in the way. So basically what I'm doing is I am lining it all up. Now there are very conveniently for me, there are holes in the bottom of it that are pretty well centered, pretty, you know, it's pretty easy, at least for me, if not, you know, just find your center spot on whatever piece of wood you're working on. You can also make something similar to this from uh, the stuff that you get from Dollar Tree, those really long signs, lots and lots of different options for you. So I will add that part of the vinyl and I added everything else. I went ahead and taped it off too because I just don't trust myself when it comes to painting and stenciling. And I have the ink chalk paint from Waverly and we are just going to take one of these little round sponge brushes from Dollar Tree and just go in a kind of like straight up and down pouncing motion. If it bleeds in a little bit, I'm okay with it just because it is, um, you know, I, I do more of like the rustic style stuff. I had even thought about sanding it down, but the end result I'm happy enough with that I didn't want to sand it too. You could do that though. You could totally let it dry completely like overnight the next day and sand it and give it a much more crisp look or even distress it. And we'll go ahead and like supersonic speed, remove all this extra bits of tape and the vinyl and everything like that. So obviously this is a much slower process than what you're seeing right now because I speed it up for the sake of time because this video is already long enough. <laughs> you guys will hopefully stick around and see all these projects for, uh, you know, in the video today because I'm really excited and happy with them. And now, like I said, this board I actually got in Savannah is the only piece that you're seeing today, the only piece of wood or whatnot that I paid anything for. And I got a really good size bundle of stuff from him up in Savannah. It's like Jerry's Antiques, I think, in like the downtown historical area of Savannah. I paid, I think, $70 and I got a bunch of stuff, like not just this. Um, and I don't know when, I mean, with most of it, his stuff comes from over in Europe. And I don't know, honestly, when they're from, but they're all broken and just all kinds of different things you can do with broken stuff. So if you see it on the side of the road, um, you know, no, uh, there is no shame in my game. I pick it up. <laughs> this isn't from the side of the road, but you get the idea. So as you can see here, we're just going to add on all these hooks. I ended up doing it a little different than those, but it gives you the basic idea. And here it is. It turned out so cute. And I love the little red cups. They're just absolutely perfect. All right, on to our next project. And this is actually, again, something I found on the side of the road. It was on the table. It was like a tabletop of this like cast iron, I don't know, table thing. I'll have to, I'll have to put it up on Instagram. You guys can take a look at what it is. Um, but I am going to use my scroll saw on, not my scroll saw, my miter saw on this. And I just clamp it down and I am cutting it down. Uh, I wanted to make a book stack, a wood, a faux wood book stack, I guess, technically. Uh, I didn't measure anything out. I knew I wanted for there to be a small one, a medium one and a longer one. So I'm just using like each book or each previous block book, whatever we're going to call it to measure out the next one. I like things to be simple. I, if I can avoid measuring something, I will. <laughs> so that's what we're doing is, and I'll just put, you know, I use it the first one to measure it. And then I'll put the actual saw down, see where it's going to cut, make sure it kind of measures up to where I want it to be. And I think I ended up 
with most of them about like an inch difference in size, just to kind of give you an idea. And I already went through and sanded it a little bit. I don't want to remove all of this, you know, old weathered look, but there was some, some nasty stuff on it. So I did sand it down and I'm taking my antique wax from folk art and a baby wipe. And I am just going to deepen it up a little bit. Again, I am making these look like books. So I didn't want them. I didn't want them to look too much like wood, but I didn't want them to not look like wood. Does it make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now these puppies, I'm pretty sure that this stuff was actually sitting outside, but that's all right. And I have this rice paper. It is from Decoplage Queen and I will link below where I pick it up. You can check out her shop. It's My Victorian Heart, I believe. She's adorable, the person who owns it uh, up in St. Augustine. Again, it's up for me. It's not up for most of you, but that's okay. I am gonna use this new glue stick that I bought. It is the Craft Bond. I really like it for paper. Um, I will link it for you below. It is from Amazon that I got it at least. I think it works really well. You can like pick up your paper and move it and reposition it. I like to use this briar just to give us a, a good adherence, like really pressing it down into the wood. Because I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. I don't know how Mod Podge would do with the rice paper. I don't know if it would wrinkle it or not, but I really like this glue stick method though. Um, right now what I did is I wanted to have it open like a little bit open like book the um, the wood part showing on the top and the bottom. So I did trim off just a little bit of it and I'll take myself that same baby wipe. I actually have not added on any new um, antique wax. I had to think about what it was there. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to go over the edges a little bit heavier and then go around on the inside of it. I'm just kind of trying to blend it in a little bit. And I'll be honest, I feel like I need a little bit lighter something on this. You'll see at the end, you'll have to let me know what you think I could add. I, maybe I just need to add a little bit of greenery or something to it, but it just, it feels very dark. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's all right just to be dark. You can, you know, it's nice to have different colors and tones and stuff in your Christmas decor stuff. Um, and then I went ahead and cut out with my Cricut, which you could easily do with rub on transfers or stickers from Dollar Tree. But I went ahead and cut it out and I just have this one since it is the Santa Claus is like the actual like picture. And if you look, it says that up on the top, it says the, the Santa Claus or yes, the Santa Claus storybook. So I went ahead and cut that out on my Cricut so that we could have the same consistent, you know, book title on the spine as well. And on these ones, it is actually curved. The wood on the front part that you're looking at is like, it looks like the spine is curved. It was like perfect. So I've got Miracle on 34th Street and the Christmas uh Christmas story, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> All right. So on to our next one. I have just a piece of pallet wood. It's got some nails in it. So I'm going to take like the back end of a nail or take the back side of the board and I'm going to hammer in a nail to help pull out all of those nails that are kind of stuck in there because I cut it apart. I used a reciprocating saw to cut it apart from the like actual, um, pallet. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Now on this, I want to make sure I keep my nail spots because to me, that is what's going to give us a lot of that rustic look. Now this saw it is actually one that does slide. So I loosened up the slide so I could go ahead and cut. I think this one cuts about 12 inches. Put this baby on your Christmas list. If you don't have one and you have space for it and you have someone that wants to get you like a really nice present, Put this one on your list. <laughs> um, all right, so I sanded it down with a pretty um, rough sandpaper. I went down, I think like the, the finest I did on it was like a 220 or 240 or something. And then I did stain it in that honey, I think that's what it was called, the honey um, wood stain. And I've cut this out from my Cricut. You can use a lot of different stencil options on this. Um, I didn't want to do a chalk uh, Chocotor on it just because it is so rough. Chocotor works the best on a much um, 
finer sanded item. I, I think that's probably the best way to say it. Um, but we're doing the same basic idea that I've done on some of the previous projects where you're just pouncing on your paint and this one is going to bleed a little. I will say it right now just because it is such a rough wood. It will bleed a little bit, but this thing is like as rustic as, maybe not as rustic as it gets, but you know what I mean. It's pretty rustic. So I was okay with it. I didn't have a problem with it. You can also sand it down, like I mentioned before, to kind of, you know, get away from some of that bleeding, but it wasn't bad. So I was, I was okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to weed off all of my extra vinyl and I will kind of cut it as I go if I need to. It just really depends. You kind of just work with your projects and find the things that work best. And once we're done with that, hang in there guys, we're in like the home stretch. I know this is a really long video. I've got this fat quarter. I want to say I got it from like Hobby Lobby last year. You can easily use, so, oh, sorry, hit my camera. <laughs> you can easily use some different things from Dollar Tree, whether it's like a scarf that you find from there or their fabric squares that they do have sometimes, if you can get your hands on them. And what I did is I was just kind of getting an idea of where I wanted it and I just snip a little spot and then tear it away. It actually tore really easily, but I wanted it again. I don't want it to look like too precise. I wanted it to be pretty rough, pretty rustic. You get in the feel of this uh, whole video. It's pretty rustic. Um, and then I needed something to hold some greenery. So I took some of the Dollar Tree like colored twine. You could use yarn too and or just regular twine that would work as well and i cut down um probably like five to ten or so uh strips of it because i didn't want to wrap it around i didn't want to have it i don't want it to hold like to pinch on it you know what i mean i don't know to gather it i don't want it to gather on the material because it's going to then get glued onto the board so i glued it on the back side uh for each side of the string twine, yarn, whatever you're using. And then if it's not straight, you know what, again, I'm like, you know what, it's fine. It's rustic. It doesn't have to be straight. Um, but you can obviously make it straight if that's, if that's your thing, if that would drive you crazy, um, which I know it would for some, it doesn't me. So I'm okay with it. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot. I'm sorry. So we are going to just glue down. I went ahead and glued down each side on the front part of the board. And then I'm also going to glue down it on the back side of the board. Like this, you could staple it too. Um, <laughs> I was so funny. I was, uh, the, you'll see in a second, one part I was stapling. I had my staples in like backwards. <laughs> they were in the wrong way. And I told my husband, like, this darn thing doesn't work. And he's like, your staples are in the wrong way. I was like, oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> It's like, how do you, how do you not, how do you, you know, how do you function sometimes? This, uh, those are questions I ask myself, but this was one of those like late night projects. I was like, you know what? I need, I need one more. I just need one more thing. And isn't this pick gorgeous? It was a little on the pricey side. I got it at Hobby Lobby and it was half off and it was still like five bucks, but I couldn't get over how pretty it was. So I splurged and I bought it. Uh, sometimes you do that, right? And I put the berries in it here, but I didn't care for them all that much in the end. I ended up taking the berries out just because they felt like they were too big. So I'll probably work on something. They're not glued in. I just have them setting it, sitting in the actual twine. So I'll probably work on it, figure out if I like something else a little bit better or if I leave it this way. Who knows? Who knows which way I'll be going. And I've got some rusty jingle bells that I got also from Hobby Lobby. I found those along with some that were more of like a white one, like white. And I, it was calling my name, so I had to get it. Uh, what I will do too, I actually found inspiration for this piece off of a Pinterest account. And if I still have it, I will link it for you below. That way, if you love this and you want to get more ideas, you can also go over there and check it out. I did, you know, threw my own spin on it and everything. So here is that dreaded staple cut <laughs> that I had the staples in wrong. It works a lot better now that they're in right. Um, but I'm just going to staple down that twine and hot glue it as well. Here's how it turned out. Super pretty. Love the way it ended up. 
here's all of our projects as well so you can take a quick little look and i am so happy with the way they turned out and i hope you liked them too uh don't forget to check out our playlist of my friends that are also doing some salvaged projects and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here i would love it if you would and i will see you next time mm -hmm.